up with Ellie Anderson. I think it's been like, what, a month or more since we last caught up with you. Maybe. Yeah, so, I haven't seen you around much. I know. So give me the rundown as to what's happened since Providence? Oh, yeah, that was a long time ago. Well, I think um, most recently in my mind is the November block racing, you know, from Cincinnati to Louisville for Jingle Cross and actually Gateway Cup before that. So it was a nice four <laughs> block, four race block, um, four weekends, um, just one after the other. And... It was fun. I mean, thinking back on those four weekends, it's just, you know, they're all just such great courses, such different conditions, and it was just great to feel part of the circuit. Right. Or the circus, as I call it, <laughs> either way. But, um, you know, I just, I feel like I raced the first race in that block strong and the last race strong, and uh, that was important to me and, and worked out well. Nice. Now, were you going home between them or? Um, so I, most of the time, but I did get to work remotely um, for Strava one week in there. It was a week between Cincinnati and Louisville. Nice. And that was kind of a cool experience. Um, but reflecting on it, it was actually really interesting. The week after that I did go back to the Strava office, I actually had new appreciation for kind of changing things up and getting a mental break as well as a physical break from the racing. And I sort of figured out that although it's really nice not to get on an airplane and fly all the way back to San Francisco every week, I actually like, I really do value the part of my life that's working for Strava because although it's cycling related, it gives me a break from, you know, the racing and the scene yep. and um, just as an outlet for something else for me to focus on for a couple days before I jump back into the action. Right, and so you had Thanksgiving at home in New England, mm -hmm. and then here at Bay State, you had the win yesterday and third today. Mm -hmm. So what was the, give me the rundown of like what the difference was between the days. Well, yeah, yesterday the ground well, was below freezing, so the ground stayed frozen, um, and uh, it's definitely a little bit of a faster race. There was, it was icy under the mud, so yesterday was still slippery, but it wasn't muddy. Mm -hmm. And today, with all the rain, um, from the last time I pre-rode the course, which is about an hour and a half before my race, to my race, it really changed. Um, and I, just, I lined up with, I think, a tire tread that wasn't great for the conditions at race time. Right. Did, at the pre-ride, it went, it, they were fine. Um, and I, you know, got on the start line confident that my tires were going to be okay. But I, it, I soon learned that it, it kind of felt like I had double flats at times. I was yep. like, really, do I have a flat tire? I swear I have a flat tire. So I'm just going to call it a mechanical today. Um, I pitted, took my, took my spare bike, and it had mud tires on it, and I was fine from then on. So Nice. So I remember last year when you were here, it was like kind of a, a breakout day for you. Like, you had a really good weekend here. This year you've just kind of been crushing it, so was it different coming here as like sort of the reigning, you know, leading the U.S. Pro Series, all that stuff? Was it different feeling being on the start line compared to last year? I mean, maybe a little bit, but I think it didn't make a big difference to me. I think what was most important for me this weekend is being around all my favorite New England friends and um, really being welcomed back into my old team, the ladies first team that I was on last year. Okay. And I just got excellent help this weekend from my old mechanic and my both my old mechanics Aww. actually. Kurt and Oscar and obviously um, the whole Milton family that is the backbone of Ladies First family just you know, welcomed me in back into the fold. And it was so, for me, it was just kind of back to my roots, back to um, the people that really helped me get started and cross. And that was just so nice. So yeah, getting on the start line, you know, I definitely felt like a whole year had passed, but at the same time, it was just deja vu. I mean, I could have, this kind of feels like last year. It's the yep. same thing, same people, and it's comforting and wonderful. And I had a oh. blast this weekend. Nice, and uh, next weekend, Bend? Actually not. I have a wedding in Toronto. Oh <laughs> so my goodness, so you get a weekend weekend off. off. Yeah, I have a weekend off. I actually um coming into this weekend weekend it hit me that um it's my last set of US races before Europe. So Oh my gosh. And so Europe for Christmas week? Mm -hmm. Are you so excited? Yeah, I'm really excited. It's gonna be I, I don't really know what to expect and in fact I ha I suspect that it hasn't sunk in yet, that it will 
it will take me probably until I get on the airplane on my way to Belgium mm -hmm. that I finally realize I'm going to Europe to race because right now it still feels like a dream. So I'm definitely excited. I think um, I have some good confidence going into it, but also some good perspective knowing that I've never raced cyclocross in Europe before. Yeah. And that I'll be racing against women that are pretty used to the conditions over there and that I'll have a little bit of a learning curve, but I'm actually looking forward to that. Sweet. All right. Well, we'll have to catch up afterwards then. Sounds good.